So whether you've performed anything from a routine service right through to a major engine rebuild, it's going to be important to check and if necessary adjust ignition timing. So what are you going to need to perform this operation? Well the good news is not a right lot but one of the more specialist bits of kit you're going to need is a timing light like this one. Uh, this is about as basic as they come. I think it cost about £30 but for what I'm going to do today it's absolutely fine. And then chances are the only other thing you're going to need is a spanner or a wrench of some kind and in the case of this engine it's a 13mm. So what is ignition timing? Well, the best way I can think to describe it is it's the precise point at which the spark plug ignites the fuel air mixture in the cylinder relative to the position of the piston. Okay, that probably didn't sound as simple as I'd have liked, but you know what, that's not the important thing. What the important thing is, is that you know ignition timing is measured in degrees BTDC. Now that's degrees before top dead sensor. Now, there's going to be a specific setting for your engine which you're going to need to find out before you even attempt this. Uh, this engine, these modifications, I'm going to go for a safe 10 degrees before top dead centre. But before we do anything, we need the engine up to normal operating temperature. So if it's not, get in it, fire it up, take it for a spin around the block. So once you've got it nice and warmed up, it's time to begin. So to make this as easy as possible from here on out, I'm solely going to be concentrating on cylinder number one. Okay, so for now we might as well forget that two, three and four exist because once we set the timing on cylinder number one, the rest of them are going to take care of themselves. So how do we know where exactly the piston is in cylinder number one? Well, I'm going to show you. So I'm just switching cameras for a second because we've got to get right down in here and what I'm aiming for is the crankshaft pulley. So looking down towards the crankshaft pulley on the engine you're going to see a bunch of marks. Now these are your timing marks so you're going to need to look in your workshop manual to figure out exactly what each of these grooves represents. So I've already done that so I know the left hand groove here, I know that is TDC and I know each groove after that is an extra four degrees before top dead center so that's TDC that's four degrees before top dead center eight and finally twelve so I need to set my timing to ten degrees before top dead center which is halfway between these last two marks now what I'm going to do and I strongly suggest you do the same because it will make everything a hell of a lot easier is grab some tipex and I'm going to mark TDC and I'm going to mark what I want to set my timing to which is 10 degrees before TDC. You'll have probably noticed that I do love my Tipex. Like, I don't think there's a component in this engine bay that hasn't got Tipex on it. So now that I've marked these up, you'll notice they stand out a lot more clearly. And I've also marked this pointer here. Now this is your reference point. So, for example, if I turn the engine over by hand in the direction it rotates when it's running, okay, as this first mark comes round and lines up there, I know that the piston in cylinder number one is 10 degrees before top dead center. Okay, and if I continue to rotate through there, okay, now I know that piston number one is at the top of its stroke. In other words, it is at TDC. So once you've established where your timing marks are and how to read them, well then it's time to hook up the timing gun. Excuse me. It's time to hook up the timing gun. So, these two terminals onto the battery, red positive, black negative, I'm sure you didn't need me to tell you that. And then this one clips around the spark plug wire for cylinder number one. And then essentially what this is going to do is flash every time the spark plug for cylinder number one fires.
So once you've hooked up the timing light, make sure all the wires are out of the way and start the engine. Now it's important that the engine is idling at about 800-900 RPM throughout this process and if at any point it changes, you're going to have to adjust the idle screw on the carburetor to compensate. So with the engine ticking over, point the gun towards the crankshaft pulley and pull the trigger. I'm hoping you can see that. My timing is pretty much spot on where it needs to be. A number one spark plug is firing 10 degrees before top dead centre. Spot on. You really didn't think I was going to leave it there, did you? Okay, so, should you need to adjust your ignition timing, how do you do it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. All you've got to do is undo the lock tab on the distributor just enough so you can rotate it by hand. Now, before we go any further, it's worth knowing that when we talk about ignition timing, we talk about advancing timing and we talk about retarding it. Now, advancing it is putting more ignition advance in and retarding it is taking it away. Now which way you have to rotate the distributor to do either of these solely depends on which way the rotor arm rotates in the distributor. So in the case of this particular engine I know that the rotor arm rotates clockwise when the engine's running so rotating the distributor body anti-clockwise will advance the ignition timing and rotating it clockwise will retard it. Okay so when you're ready to set the timing the first thing you need to do is locate the distributor now mine is here, okay, I'm going to swap cameras for a minute because I'm just going to go down the back of the distributor to show you the lock bolt, okay, I've already put the spanner on the lock bolt, you can see it there, now all you need to do is slacken this off enough to be able to turn the distributor by hand, any more is just not necessary. Uh, the other thing I'm going to show you while I'm down here is that this is a vacuum advance for the distributor, now strictly speaking to do this job properly this should be disconnected and blanked off at both ends but have I set the timing and left it connected before yes I have I've got to say and I didn't think it made much of a difference but you can do as you please all I'm saying is strictly speaking should it be disconnected and blanked off at both ends yes it should so I've just slackened off that lock bolt and what it might be worthwhile doing now is marking the current position of the distributor with some tipex. So, should you need to go back to your original setting, you can always do that. What's also worth bearing in mind is that only very slight adjustments are required here, you know. Don't go swinging it 90 degrees because you're only going to end up with an engine that doesn't run. So, once you're happy with that, connect up the timing light, fire it up, you're ready to adjust the timing. <laughs> So as you can see right now the timing is spot on, but for the sake of the experiment, if I rotate the distributor clockwise, I'm retarding the timing, and if I rotate the distributor anti-clockwise, I'm advancing the timing. Okay, so back clockwise to set it to where it was before, and there we go, that's spot on. Now you'll notice the idle changes when I adjust the timing. And like I said before, you're going to need to adjust your idle screw on your carburetor to compensate for that. Now all you've got to do is tighten up the lock bolt on the distributor, and it's done. Now it never hurts once you've tightened down that lock bolt, just to double check the timing again, but once you're happy with it, essentially that's it, so well done, you've set ignition timing. Now, I gotta run, so I'll catch you next time.